Welcome to my YouTube studio. Now in this video, I wanna break down exactly how I built this studio to be the perfect space to film my videos when I'm here in my office, but also be a place where I can work on my scripts and do all of my editing. So I'm gonna show you everything that I use here in my office to make it super simple to be able to flip on the camera and start recording. So what we're gonna go through is my entire camera setup that I use, my editing setup, and then just generally how I set up this room to be a good place to be able to just make content and be a creative space. And I wanna say a special thanks to Soundstripe for sponsoring this video, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. Now the space that works for me doesn't necessarily work for you, but I just wanna give you a look inside my space. Maybe it'll give you some ideas of things that you can do for your creative space. So this is just a spare bedroom in my house. My daughter is on the other side of this wall watching Toy Story right now, and I can kind of hear it, but you actually can't hear it at all because it's so low. All I'm hearing is a little boof, boof, boof. Now, in terms of space, let's measure this out. So the actual dimensions are about nine by 14 feet. Not the biggest space in the world. It's definitely a little bit longer, but in terms of width, it's pretty narrow. But what I've done is I've made the most out of this space. And so as we walk to this end, you can see that I have my whole set back here and that faces towards this door, which I've left this natural light coming through. I like the way this looks with the natural light coming through. And so I have my set down there, my editing set up here, and then I have a closet. So first let's break down this set. This is just a cheap table from Amazon. As you can hear, it's kind of squeaky. This is just something that I could easily move around and it's a good place to sit at, show a couple things here on the desk, but it's not overly big. It's basically just used for my set. Now, in terms of what I have set up here, is I have one light that's at a 45 degree angle. And this light is an Aperture 60X with a small softbox on it. So the light is a little bit more focused on me and doesn't spill as much into the background. And because I'm so far this way in the room, when I'm hitting myself with the light, the shadow kind of falls down that way. So you're not seeing it on any walls or anything like that. I wanted to create separation and make a pool of light here and then a pool of light back there. Now the second light that I'm using is one up on the ceiling. And this I just mounted on the wall, probably not the best light for this situation, but I think it gives me some extra ambient light and it gives me a nice rim. So it gives me a little bit more of that separation. Now I don't use a fill light, I just have my key, my hair, and then I just have some background lights. And so for my background, what I'm using is two Aperture MCs. Those are what are colored in the background. And I can change those to be basically any color. And I like just having a small hit of color in the background, whether that's an orange teal look, or right now I have just a teal look, or sometimes I'll change it up and do something like a purple look when I go into our sponsor, which is Soundstripe. And I've been using Soundstripe for all of my music, on both of my channels. And Soundstripe provides better music, sound effects, and stock footage for your videos without dealing with copyright strikes. One of the things as creators we have to worry about is the music that we're putting in our videos. And we wanna make sure that we're using music that's properly licensed so that we don't have any issues. Now how Soundstripe works is that it's a library of music and you could start searching by different sounds, by different moods, by different instruments, and find exactly the kind of music that you need for the project that you're working on. And then when you find a track that you like, you can find similar tracks to that sound. And so as you find music, you'll be able to find similar tracks that will help with your edit. You can also create playlists out of the tracks that you like. So I have a playlist that's all retro style music because I like to use that for some of my intros. But then on my second channel, I do a lot of stories around adventure and I explore the history behind some of these unique places and using more cinematic style music fits these videos much better. And Soundstripe is unique because you won't find this music on any other licensing platform for because they commission their music directly from the artists. Now I use a lot of sound effects in my video and they have a pretty expansive library of just different random sound effects that you can use for all styles of content. And also if you need stock footage for your videos, well they also have a stock footage library. So make sure you head down description, I'll include a link that has more information about Soundstripe and I highly suggest you check out the creator plan which is perfect for YouTube videos. Make sure you use my code Jevin20 for 20% off.
Now getting back into my setup, the last light that I use is that bar light that you see back there. It's just a practical light, which means that it's a light that you use in the shot. So it's another one of these bar lights and I just have it turned down to like 10%. And the reason that I'm using that light is to match those other bars of light which are in the back. Now, these bars way back here are my doors. And this is actually just some curtains with a little bit of light spilling around the edges. You see when I pull this out, a lot more light comes in. And instead of closing this off and making it a complete blackout studio, I actually like the look of these bars and I just added this additional bar on the side. And so in terms of lighting, I use a little bit of natural light. I don't use a lot, it's just those bars in the background, but I let that spill in and then I add these additional lights, my key, my hair, the two colored lights and the one tube light. And my goal is just to make it look more dynamic and look like the space is bigger than it is. And for audio, I use the Rode NTG4 and that's sitting right above me. You can see it right here. I just have it on this arm that comes right over the desk. And so whenever I sit down here, I have my audio, my light, and I could just hit record on the camera and start recording. Now the camera that I'm using is the A7S Mark III. Now this is probably overkill for an office camera. I could get away with something much cheaper and much smaller, but I use two A7S Mark III's to make all of my videos and when I'm home, I just put one over here. So I use this one here when I'm out and if I need a second camera, I'll bring my other one with me. But I shoot everything on two Sony A7S Mark III's. Now the Rode is an XLR microphone. So I have the Sony XLR adapter on top of my A7S Mark III and I'm using house power. So I have a battery adapter in my A7S Mark III. All of this is plugged into the wall, so I never have to worry about batteries when it comes to my camera. I can just flip it on and start recording. Now, I use this app that allows me to see myself on my phone. So I'm monitoring myself, I can record, I can start and stop the record here on my phone, and I usually just have this sitting right out of frame. But what ties all of this together and makes it so that it's super clean is this one pole that I have that is the setup that everything sits on. So this is called a gear tree. And I think this really made my whole design work together so cohesively. And that's because everything is mounted to this one pole. I have a pole, it's not drilled into anything. It just uses tension from the ground to the ceiling and it just holds everything on the singular pole. Now from here, you can build out whatever you want. And so there's so many different attachments, whether it's a lighting attachment, an audio attachment, and just things like these bars that you can attach things like cameras or like I'm using here, this is my hat rack, but you can completely change everything about this. And I got this system back in probably November of last year, and I've been using it ever since. And as soon as I started using this system, it just made everything so much easier because I don't have to have like a tripod on the ground. I don't have to have light stands. I don't have to have an extra boom arm on another C stand. Everything is on this one stand. And you can even add more to this and they have options that just hook on the side of your desk as well. But for my space, this is what works great for me. And I could keep adding to this if I want additional accessories that work for this setup. And in terms of cables, I just run all my cables on the back side of the pole. I use some Velcro and I have a power outlet down there. So it just makes it super simple. This is like one of the best parts of this space and what helps me make it a more minimalist design. And having a minimalist setup is something that is super important to me. So as a creator, I don't like lots of mess and I don't like just having things cluttered everywhere. For me, I like to have things super clean and super minimal. So just the few pieces of gear that I need to be able to make my videos and work in my space. I try to keep this space as clean as possible. Basically everything here has a function and is used. And I could easily clutter up the space with a lot of additional things and keep cameras out and different parts. But for me, what I found is that when I'm working in this kind of creative writing, editing space, I wanna just have it super minimal. And so that's what I've done with everything in this space. Now trying to get better audio in this space because it is pretty echoey with these walls. On the ceiling, I have a bunch of acoustic foam. I just lined my ceiling with it. And then down here on the ground, I have carpet. And between the acoustic foam and the carpet, it definitely helps dampen the sound. So when I'm filming in my desk over there, I just push this big chair out of the way and I use this plasticky chair 
that was from a shoot for my production company and it just, it's easier because I don't like the look of the big chair with the headrest when I'm on that space doing my A-roll. But for here at my desk, this is, you know, I like having one of these bigger chairs, just more comfortable. But the main focus that I built this entire studio around is this desk and my editing setup. So I use a two monitor system. I have a big curved monitor and then I have another flat monitor up top here. And I went with the stacked monitors for a few reasons. One is when I'm editing in Final Cut, I can see my timeline super long here on the bottom. And then what I do in the top is I make it full screen. So there is nothing on this screen besides my image. So this just gives me a better way to see my videos when I'm editing them. And also when it comes time to color grade, this is a color accurate monitor. So this is what I use for all of my color grading. And I just like the ability to have a bigger monitor that I could see my image full screen whenever I'm working on a project rather than being just a corner of the screen as a whole. And for keyboard mouse, I use a Logitech keyboard and mouse. It's all Bluetooth hooked into my computer, which you're probably wondering where my computer is. My computer is actually in the closet and I'll show you that whole setup in a second, but I put everything in the closet so that all you see here at the desk is keyboard, mouse, monitors, and then my two studio monitors for audio. And these are Mackie HR 824s. They're just good studio monitors to hear my audio super clean. And then I have my little Ikea plant. Gotta have the Ikea little grassy plant. I don't know how long I've had this thing, but a little pop of green in the corner. And I guess the last thing is Daily Stoic. It's a book I read every day and it's just here so I can grab it whenever I need it. And how the monitors are set up is that there's a single pole attached to my desk and both the monitors are on that pole. I'm going for this completely minimal design so I wanna have the least amount of stands, the least amount of cables and everything is just tidied up nice and neat. All the cables for this setup are underneath the desk and they're actually going through the wall. So I punched a hole through the wall and punched it into the closet and that's where my whole computer setup is. Now two things that I think are super useful. One, just have some power ports right here with some USB power. So if I ever need to just charge something quick, just working them with something, maybe a new camera, I can just put it right here on the desk and charge it. And then this little drawer, which has pens and adapters and anything else. So this is my whole computer setup. I run everything off a 14 inch MacBook Pro. So my setup is fairly simple. I have a rack case in here where I put everything in this rack case and then on top of it sits my laptop. And the reason I did it this way is because I wanted to just be able to pull out a few cables, grab the laptop and go. And then when I get home, I just set the laptop in, plug in a few cables and then I could sit down and start editing. So I've thought through this setup and I've done a bunch of different iterations and it might not look the cleanest, but it does work super well. So how it works is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I have three USB-Cs on this MacBook Pro and an HDMI out. The one HDMI out goes to one of these two monitors. Now the USB-Cs go to a few different things. I have two different eight bay hard drive RAID systems. This one up top here, that is my main edit drive that I work off of for my whole library of footage. Anything new that I'm working on just stays on the laptop. I have a four terabyte hard drive in my laptop, so whatever project is current, I could just leave it on the hard drive and then move it to this RAID when I'm done with it. But if I ever need to dig into old footage, which is something that I do all the time in my videos, it all lives on this one RAID system. This is a 98 terabyte hard drive. Now I have a second one of these down here and that one is left as individual drives. And so for my production company, I'm constantly swapping drives in and out, going back into my archive and grabbing different things. And also I'm just always backing up footage. So everything that's on this master 98 terabyte hard drive also has a backup somewhere else because you never want a single point of failure. And yes, a RAID is redundant to a degree. Like this one is a RAID 5, so I have a single hard drive failure. But the issue is if that drive fails and then another drive fails, well then I'm screwed. So basically I have this RAID set up as just a huge drive that I could use at any point. It is secure to a degree, but I do make backups of everything and I keep that offsite somewhere else. Now to add additional SSDs when I'm editing, I have a single Thunderbolt 3 down here where I can add on small SSDs. And then I also have a Blackjet tower. Now this Blackjet tower is super useful because all of these cartridges are swappable. Right now you can see I have six 
SD card readers, and that's when I'm doing the production with my production company. I can put all six cards in at once, set them all up to transfer on hedge, and then it just all goes and it all gets verified. The super easy way to deal with a ton of footage without having to sit there and monitor it all. However, I could also swap these out and put SSDs in all of these drives. So I have these SSDs, which I could swap in and out if I need additional fast hard drives to work off of. So depending on what the project is, if I need some fast SSDs, well, I could use these and put them in and out of the Blackjet system, or I could use portable SSDs and hook them to my Thunderbolt 3 down there. So a lot of different options for memory, and it just makes it easy so I could plug in anything at any time. And then the last USB-C port that I have on my laptop hooks up to a dock. That's where I could plug in some USB-A ports, and I also have another monitor out that goes to the second monitor. And then of course, up top, I have my super expensive YouTube counter. I just keep it up there. It pops up every thousand subscribers. And then on top of that, I have a couple shelves. So I have some tools, some hard drives, and then I have my whole setup that I use for voiceover work when I'm doing my story pieces or if I just need to use voiceover in any of my videos. So this is what I use for voiceover work. I have my Zoom Classic H4n. I've had this thing since college. I mean, this thing is ancient, still works great. And I plug in an XLR. I have my Rode pod mic, and then I just have this little set of acoustic foam. It's a little cove, so I could sit here and I could do some audio for voiceover work. I like just having an easy system to be able to sit here and do some recording. I thought about actually putting this whole setup onto my pole and making it all in one, but it's not that hard to pull this out and just have my voiceover. Or if I'm not shooting any A-roll over here, I'll just keep this on my desk and just keep it here so that I can come over and do some different voiceover work if that's something that I'm working on. Now I have this other window here and I got these blackout shades. So if I do want light in here, I can open these up and I can bring in some additional light. But I also have the same blackout shades up here. So if I don't want to have this look of these bars in the background, well, what I could do is bring down these blackout shades and then I could just black out the entire room. Typically, I don't really do that. These work fine, but if I'm working on something where I want no light in this room, well, then I'll just pull down this blackout shade and it completely blacks out the room. I think it's always good wherever you're setting up your YouTube studio is you have the option to be able to black it out if you really need to just control the light and not have any light spilling into the space. Also over here, I have my fake plant, which is great for some green and some background elements. And then of course, my 100,000 YouTube award sits right up there as well. Now on the bottom of my rack, I have backup power. So if the power goes out in the neighborhood, well, I can have about two to three hours of power still on these hard drives, which allows me to just close up projects, get things done and turn everything off. When I close this, it actually cuts out all the sound of all those hard drives and it's silent in this room. All I have is my AC unit, which AC is super important. So I installed a little AC unit up here in the corner, the actual compressors outside. But when I was in my old studio back in my apartment years ago, I had no AC, I was on the third floor and I just was always shooting videos and just dripping sweat and drying off. And I told myself I would never have a space without proper AC again. And we have AC in our house. However, I got a separate unit just for this room so that I can completely control temperature so that when I'm filming, I'm not sitting here dripping sweat, no matter what it is outside. Now, another thing that I like to have is a whiteboard. I like to have a big whiteboard. This is one that's on wheels, it can move around, and it's got two sides so I could flip it. So when I'm working on a story project, I can wheel my whiteboard over here and it could be right next to my desk and I could be doing some writing, I could be scripting out things, I could be trying to plot out what's going on while also working on the edit. So I could very easily move around this space and just be able to have a space where I can write anything notes and just put it up physically in a big area so that I can work on my projects. When I'm working on stories, a lot of times I like to just write down a bunch of different notes and having a whiteboard just makes it so that I can get off my computer because I don't always like just sitting on the computer for everything. I like having notes physically in front of me and instead of using like paper on my desk, I like to use the big whiteboard. Now to fill this wall, because it was just a blank gray wall for a while, I just have a few drone shots that I've taken. 
These are canvas prints that were 30 bucks on some deal. And I just swap these out once in a while for different photos. Just kind of brings some life to this room, especially this big gray wall. And the reason that it's this color gray is this is a film neutral gray. It's a special paint. So when you're doing color grading, the gray behind is not reflecting any color, not an orange tint or a blue tint. So you can see your colors accurately on the monitor. So I just painted the whole room this color and it, it works well for filming and editing. So the good thing about this setup on the pole here is that like my microphone, I could just push up out of the way. The light, I could just push out of the way. So it's all super movable so that I could get over here into the corner. So when I'm not filming, I just have these things pushed up out of the way, camera back. And so I have complete space. I don't have anything on the ground that's obstructing where I'm going. And I have these two Husky shelves. These are work shelves for like tools but they work great for camera gear as well. I have a little charging station here. I think six charging ports, USB. I have my iPad here. I have some AirPods right now, but if I need to charge anything, this is a little station that I have set up. Over here, I have my Aperture MCs. I have a ton of memory cards and just some things that I need access to all the time. A lint roller, which I have out to roll off my black shirts because I feel like there's always stuff on my black shirts and I have it out so to remind myself to actually do it, and then I forget to do it. And then I have a chair for visitors. I have my robot vacuum, cleans it nicely in this space. And then I have a drum. So if I ever get bored of editing, I could sit here and play my drum. And that's it. Super simple and minimal. That's how I like it when I'm in my creative space. But this is the perfect creative YouTube office for me. And hopefully this will give you some ideas on things that you can do in your space that could work for you. But make sure you head down the description and check out Soundstripe. Their music is great and I use it in all of my videos now. And next you should check out this video right here. It goes through a ton of different tips on how to shoot adventure videos. And I go through all of my gear that I typically bring with me when I'm out of this space here. I'll see you on the next video.